Hello everyone, I'm Kevin, otherwise known as Forum BX257, here to bring you another 1980s G.I. Joe toy review, and just in time for Canada Day, I have one of the most recognizable of all the Canadian G.I. Joe vintage exclusives. Well, let me get it out of the bag first. A 1984 Consumers Distributing Exclusive Cobra Motorized Tank with its driver, Cobra Commander. Now, Consumers Distributing was a catalog-only order store, and even though it did have some physical locations, it's basically places where you just went to pick up your items. It had some display shelves and uh, racks and things like that, but they were mostly there to supplement what you had ordered, either in the store or through the catalog itself. Now, this was issued first in 1984, but because Consumers Distributing, which unfortunately closed its doors in 1996, was a national franchise, there were some um, distributing places which um, they weren't as busy as others, <laughs> I would just have to uh, euphemistically say. So, some stock actually wound up sitting there for quite a while, and you could still find in some rural places um, the Cobra. Uh, motorized tank still in the catalog up until 1989. Now the tank itself is just a Mobat molded in black which is why it's nicknamed the Black Mobat and uh, it was basically just the 1983 version just remolded. However a lot of people tend to mistake this for another tank the 1985 Sears exclusive cat tank. Now these aren't obviously aren't the same because this does have some uh, red parts on it but it was mostly black and it's fairly easy to just uh, describe it as a black tank from a, uh, you know, a catalog store. And while Sears and consumers distributing they were rivals admittedly. This also came out in 1986 and just like consumers distributing some places which weren't so busy kept these on the shel store shelves for a number of years so a lot of people get confused because they remember you know the uh, the catalog being in the catalog being a, a black tank and you know being available for a number of years however they aren't the same because Hasbro in 1985 changed the mold so there are just a few little differences between this And this one. The Cobra motorized tank is just a simple remold of the original 1983 Mobat. Just done in black plastic, of course. It has all the same features as the original Mobat, such as rubber treads, which are keyed to the drive bogies on the front and on the back. The bogies in the middle are all kind of freewheeling. It has a main cannon turret, which can rotate 360 degrees, as well as elevate a tiny little bit. And just like the original Mobat's design, it also has the uh, cannon barrel, which can pop inwards. I believe originally for um, either for storage or just uh, uh, for packaging, but it's there for simulated recoil if you want. And of course, it has a tiny little command turret which moves only side to side a tiny little bit, but that's part of the uh, motorized feature. The uh, figure also just uh, sits in there sort of waist deep, rather exposed. One of the unfortunate faults of the original Mobat design, but it's kind of, um, kind of part and parcel of this design altogether. The command turret also has a tiny little uh, machine gun. Now the machine gun is kind of unique, and I'm I'm going to uh, I'm going to show a, a few other of these, of these machine guns, just so that you know which one is the original and which one isn't. Here's a look at the machine gun from the 1983 Mobat, and as you can see, the notch only goes about halfway uh, in this cone-shaped part, and that's because this. Um, 
the Cobra motorized tank it was of course taken from the 1983 mold however in 1997 they changed the mold of the uh, machine gun so that that notch actually goes about almost the whole length of this cone shaped part of the machine gun so any any one of the machine guns made for any of the Mobats after like 1997 and afterwards will look like this and I've seen a black plastic version of this from the 2003 KB exclusive um, Crimson Attack Tank 2. So uh, if you're wondering whether if you have the original or not, they should look like this and not like this. Now you probably noticed by now that my Cobra motorized tank has his tank stickers on it. As a matter of fact, as you can see from the red outline 788, which actually is very hard to see, these are the very first issue of the His Tank stickers, and I believe that they were actually given to the um, the early first versions of the um, Cobra Motorized Tank just to get rid of the um, stickers because by 1984 they would have actually have started to use the um, full solid 788 sticker, so they probably had a surplus of these stickers and they gave it to the uh, consumers distributing for use in their tank. However, even though this is an early version with these original stickers on here, it's not as desirable as what became the standard for the stickers. And this is what the Cobra motorized tank sticker sheet should look like. It's just eight red Cobra symbols in two different sizes, and that's it. Just seeing them side by side, it's fairly easy to understand how anybody could mix up the uh, Cobra motorized tank with the Crimson attack tank if you're just going by a description in a, in a book maybe. Of course the differences are actually beyond just the red plastic used in the Crimson Attack Tank. And they actually come both from the uh, battery cover compartment which is located underneath and on the front of the uh, chassis here. Uh, just this portion right here is the battery cover. And as you can see it has ridges which go along the battery cover and this is the, the front end of the tank, just the chassis part. However, on the Crimson Attack tank, which was remolded for 1985, even though it still had the 1982 copyright date on it, this is actually a changed um, both chassis and battery cover door. And you still have these ridges going along the battery door but they continue onto this front portion of the front chassis. Of course you also have these ridges here on the battery cover which actually aids in um, pulling it off and I believe the the extra ridges are there actually to, to help keep this thing in because it was fairly easy to uh, pop this thing off while this thing was in use. And of course, here's the 1985 Crimson Attack version versus the 1984 uh, Cobra Motorized Tank battery cover. And they are actually interchangeable because I have seen people use not only the battery cover to fix um, a missing battery cover, They fit on just uh, just easily, just like that. And while I have the battery compartment out, I might as well put in some big D-cell batteries in here. These are also known as HP2 in the UK and R20s in Europe. The Cobra motorized tank has all the same features of the original 1983 Molbat. So by pushing the command turret forward one click allows the tank to go forward. Pushing it back to the center stops it and pushing it completely back one click allows it to go in reverse. Just click it forward to stop it again. 
Now, if you click it forward and then turn the command turret, it allows the whole thing to turn. Just have to stop it right there. And you can just push it forward and turn it in another direction. And it'll keep on going. The same is true if you put it in reverse, clicking it back one, and then turning it, and it continues to turn in reverse. I'm not going to go in depth into the Cobra Commander as he came with the Cobra motorized tank because he is exactly the same as the retail version. He even came with the uh, pistol which plugs into his back. As a matter of fact, I'll probably put a link either below in the description or probably even on the screen if this is YouTube uh, of my 1982 and 1983 Cobra Commander review. As a matter of fact, the only difference for the figure is in the file card. Now this is the Canadian file card which has both English and French on it. And here's another one. Now as the figure was released in both 1983 and 1984, this is actually the 1984 card back. As you can see it just has the artwork on here. 1983 card back version of the file card was actually something different. I think the, the English and French was both at the top instead of separated the way it is here. From 1984 and onwards it was always separated but previous to that they actually just crammed the English and French together. Now these may look exactly the same, this one being the actual um, motorized tank version. And you can see it's just plain on the back because it would have just come in a frame inside of the box. However, if you're looking for one on the aftermarket and you don't know if it's either this version or this version, because, well, maybe you can't see uh, the backs or maybe the back portion is all torn up like that. One thing to look at is the Cobra motorized tank version actually has a trademark on the symbol, whereas the original retail version didn't have that. Even though the Cobra motorized tank is only my number two on my list of all-time favorite vintage G.I. Joe vehicles, it actually epitomizes why I collect vintage G.I. Joe toys in the first place perfectly. Now, taken from the 1982 and 83 uh, Mobat mold, it does have a few flaws, and it is a pretty simple toy. But, mechanically speaking and looks-wise, it's not that much different from the 1982 version straight to the 2008 25th anniversary version. It hasn't changed very much because it's a very solid toy. And I can understand a lot of people liking it simply because of that. I certainly do. But, on top of that, the toy really reminds me of consumers distributing. Now, this was a place that was actually very close to me. So, even though... A lot of people got the uh, catalog mailed to them. You can always just phone up the store and give them the code if you want something or you can mail in the included uh, order form to them and you could just have the your items delivered straight to your house. Of course that would be for a, a fee. However what I would do is I go straight to the actual store itself. Now the store itself was just mainly tables with the catalogs on them and just stacks of order forms and those little tiny pencils that kind of remind me of the pencils that you get at Ikea. So what you do is you'd write down the code that you'd want pertaining to whatever item that you want to buy. You take that to the cashier. Now he or she would put your order form into a cylinder. Close up that cylinder and then put it into an air-powered tube so it would go foop and either downstairs or across to another room which you couldn't see depending on the orientation of uh, whatever retail outlet that uh, they happened to be in at the time. And it would go to the stock room which you would never see. You would never see the stock room or the stock person. So the stock person would take your cylinder and your order, match it up to whatever boxes and boxes I would imagine would be in the stock room and then put your order onto a conveyor belt. Now the conveyor belt would then travel upwards, sideways, whatever, towards and behind the cashier. So the thing would just 
magically pop out behind the cashier and the cashier would just put it on the desk in order to ring it up. Now, this may sound really weird in the sort of uh, pre-internet days, but it, I mean, it's just really fun. It's really fun to remember things like that, which you just don't see anymore. And that's nostalgia. That's why I collect. Well, that's all the time I have right now. Please check out my Facebook page for more information and behind the scenes photos for these reviews. Thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for next time to see another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. See you then.